Hey guys, it's Tony, and today we're going to be taking a look at one of the best decks in the standard form right now, Zorark Galissapod. This is the exact list that Tor Direct Left just used to win the European Intercontinental Championships last week. The deck starts out with a 4-4 Zorark GX line. Zorark GX has, for two colorless, as Riot is beating, which is 20 for each of your Pokemon to play, with the full field that hits for 120, which two shots everything, um, which two shots pretty much everything in the format. And also, with Bridget, it's really easy to get a full bench. When Bridget's super good and super, and is a staple and an optimal turn one play in this format right now. We also want to run non-GX Zorark, has stand ability, which can let you evolve it from your bench and maybe put it in the active. Not the most important ability in the deck since we don't run any floatstone. But mainly we use it for the attack Mind Jack for two Carlos, does 10 plus 30 more for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. With, if your opponent has a full bench and you attach a choice band, this can do 190 and can take a surprise KO on a GX with a one prize attacker, skewing the prize trade in your favor, and also can help if your opponent tries to stall with, let's say, a non-GX of the Nine Tails or a Hoopa, which is a safeguard Pokemon that can't be hurt by our GXs, so this lets us deal with it without just being locked out of the game and losing. We also want a 3-2 Galissapod line. We run the ability... Um, Wimp out with the wimp the the wimp pod that has the wimp out ability it says during your first turn it has no retreat cost. We run this one over the other one because if you start it, both wimp pods have three retreat. That's an extremely heavy retreat cost, and running no float zone it can be hard to get out of the active. But the wimp out lets you just retreat to your bench to something like maybe the Zerua or the Tapu Koko that we'll get into later. And even though you can only use this on one turn, this is de definitely the best wimp pod to play because just retreating it out for free on the first turn is more than worth it. Also around 2 Galissapod, for 1 Grass, first impression does 30 plus 90 if it's gone from the bench to the active. This is really easy to obtain with cards like Guzma and Acerola, and maybe just and even manually retreating. Also 120 for 1 is extremely strong and energy efficient. Armor Press for 1 Grass and 2 Carlos does 100 and you take 20 less. This isn't the attack you mainly want to be using with this since it doesn't do the most damage and it requires two attachments. But this is good against things that are grass weak and maybe giving Glissapod a little bit more tankiness to its already 210 HP. And Crossing Cut GX is the only GX attack that we have the energy to actually use in this deck. For one grass and two colorless, does 150 and you switch it to the bench. This can be used to kind of get a damage of Glissapod out of the active and force your opponent to have a Guzma to knock it out. Or if the choice band can do 180 and KO most GXs. We also want a bunch of one ofs, like one Tapu Koko, like I said, for the free retreat to get Glissapod into the active. And also for Guzma, it's, that makes you switch to the bench. You can just switch into this and retreat. It's really helpful to have this free retreater. And Flying Flip is a really good attack. For two colors, that's so 20 spread. You can end up doing 100, 120 damage ac across your opponent's field for one double colorless energy, which is insane. And also, 20 damage on, let's say, a Tapu Lele or something with 170 HP means that a um, first impression with the choice band is a knockout, which can be really good for taking, for which flying, so basically flying would be really good for setting up things to take big one-hit knockouts. For psychic things like Buzzwool and Espeon GX, we run this Mewtwo. As Psychic for two colors, does 20 plus 20 more for each energy attached to your opponent's active. This is really good since, since um, our Zorark GXs are weak to Psychic, and Buzz will otherwise would terrorize our deck. It's, re they f it's really hard for them to deal with this. Um, Mewtwo, especially early on, and when they start to damage it, we can just use a card we'll talk about later, Acerola, to pick it back up and play it back down. And one more tech for the Buzz Wall matchup, we have Mr. Mime, which stops them from damaging our bench and protects our Pokemon early on, and late game can help um, stop them from getting chip damage to set up big one-hit KOs. And also it stops the Tapu Koko spread we mentioned earlier, which can help set up easier KOs. We also run three Tapu Lele, very standard. Wonder Tag, Wonder Tag is one of the best abilities in the game right now. Let's you search your deck for supporter, put it into your hand. Very standard. And our for supporter line, it's we run the standard four at Guzma, four N, but we run three Bridget. Most Galissapod decks run one, maybe two at the most, but this deck runs three. Mainly because with Zorax. Uh, attack that wants a bunch of Pokemon to play, getting a turn one Bridget is crucial. And also, running three, even though it's a dead card later in the game after turn one, maybe two at the most, 
we can just use Zorark's trade ability to discard it and just draw two more. And we actually run ten out ten outs to this for turn one Bridget, so we should get it most games. We have three Bridget, three Lele, and four Ultra Ball. Drawing any one of those ten cards will give us access to a turn one Bridget, which is extremely good. A little uncommon in this format is running only two Sycamore. Mainly because the trade ability hands start to stack up a new card, then they get filled with resources and you don't want to dump them. But drawing seven cards is just too strong to not play. So we play for early on, or maybe you're digging for one last card for the win. So we play two. Um, one other supporter we play is Mallow, which lets you search for two cards, put them on top of your deck. Which mainly doesn't seem that strong, has tons of synergy with Zora GX, which lets you draw the top two. So you can play Mallow put any two cards you want from your deck on top, and then draw them with your trade ability. Now one of the key cards in this deck is Acerola. Acerola lets you pick up a damaged Pokemon and all cards attached to it. And, and since we have 210 HP on all of our main attackers, they don't one-shot us, we can pick up Acerola to heal, and then put, um, put, back, and put them back down, maybe let's say a Bent Zorua we had unevolved in the bench, and then keep on attacking since we only require one energy attachment to deal big damage. For the items, we run four Ultra Ball. It's really standard, discard two cards and put it in search a deck for a Pokemon. Four Field Blower is a little strange, say, but um, Garbo to the Garbo Toxin really hurts this deck, so you want to get the tool off that Garbo to quick. And also Po Town and Parallel City also um, really hurt this deck as well. To and those are, so basic and we don't run any stadiums to counter those so even though four field blowers seems a little excessive all these things are really important to get rid of and have constant answers for because otherwise they could really hurt us and also if we have a bunch of field blowers we don't need just like with the extra bridgets we can just use trade to discard them and we run two enhanced hammers so that you discard a special energy this is extremely strong since a lot of decks right now run low energy counts and rely on special energy I think almost every single major deck right now, except Volcanion, is reliant on some form of special energy. So being able to discard a special energy is extremely strong. And two choice bands to deal more damage than our already damaging attacks do. Dealing 120 with the Zorark GX in the full field, plus choice band is 150. Then if they don't one-shot us, we can just Acer roll it back up. Send up another Zorark we have set up on our bench, deal 150 again, and that should two-shot pretty much anything. And one thing we really run, which is strange and surprised me, and the reason why this list is so good and innovative, is four puzzle a time. If you play one, the card's not that overwhelming at, at a time. You still get the three cards and put them on top of your deck. If you're drawing dead, this can be helpful to maybe the supporter is the third card on the deck. And you look at it, then you put on the top one, you get it for your next turn. But if you play two, that's where this card really shines. If you play two, you can put any two cards you want into your hand. Now, I've played this card in night, like Night March decks and similar decks in previous formats, but the problem was you'd only have one, you'd have to stick more away, it was hard to draw the second one, but with trade constantly drawing and digging cards from your deck without really, while keeping resources in your hand, it, you can just hold on the puzzle of time and just wait till you draw one and then play two when you need it. This gives you access to seven Acerolas, extra enhanced hammers, maybe you, you need to recover some Pokemon, or some energies, basically whatever you need. It's a really good card in this deck. For the energy, we run three grass for Glissopod and four double colorless. And that's how the, that's the deck list we have for today. And let's hop into a game and see how it runs. Okay, looks like we found a game against Kimville 11. See they are calling the coin flip. This deck doesn't really matter if you go first or second, but going first is always good when you have stuff to evolve because it lets you get the first uh, Evolutions in the first attacks. But in this format, it's not too huge of a deal. So we start with the Mulligan and our opponent Mulligans too. So let's see if we can f figure out what they're playing th from the Mulligan. Okay, we start Wimpod, which is our ideal starter because of the free retreat. It looks like we don't have much in our hand, unfortunately. We are going to mention both our rules. Let's see where our opponent, our opponent has another mulligan, so these extra cards could be good to bail us out of this less than ideal hand we have. So, it's like playing Garboder. 
and strong energy. So this strong energy is meant to directly counter my Zorak GX Marley Knot. And if I had to guess, I'd say it's Cribominable. Oh no, Buzzwool GX. Hmm. Looks like this is Buzzwool GX Garboder. I haven't played this matchup too much before, but I think with Mr. Mime and Mewtwo, we should be pretty set. Unfortunately, with this hand, this isn't. But there is a Professor Sycamore at the top of our deck. So, where we can rearrange the puzzle of time. So, what we're going to do is we're going to Guzma up this Trubbish. Hope he has no way to retreat. And then. Next turn we can play the Sycamore and hope to draw out of this less than ideal hand we've been given. Even though we play 10 outs to the turn 1 Bridget, we do still miss it sometimes. This card's Lusamine and N. He might be going, he's going here for the Gargotoxin, which is why we play 4 Field Blower, because Ability Lock really hurts us. But let's see, does he have the Flow Stone in his hand? Second Fighting Energy. And Professor Sycamore. Oh wow, this hand's been really good. Fighting Fury Belt on Buzzwool. And just passes. So we're gonna bench Glissabon. Pass the choice pans, but Sycamore anyways. And Field Blower off his fighting Fury Belt. Then we're gonna Sycamore. Let's see. Actually, I don't think I want to play the Wimpod yet. Just in case he doesn't knock out. What we might have to do though is we're going to place the DCE on this Zorark. So we can retreat into Mewtwo in case he knocks it out with this Buzzwool. And then start to deal them and hopefully we can start dealing with these buzzwolves before they, he gets too many energy and the game gets out of hand. Grab the trash lance. We only played two items, so it's not that big of a threat right now. Make that three items in the discard. It's not too hard to one shot between a. He puts three energy on. With three energy and a choice band, we can actually one shot the buzzwolf with this Mewtwo. Town isn't the best for us, but oh, he just. I don't want to fall in the Zora GX yet. Maybe I do. First things first, let's see if we have. We do have the Mewtwo and Mr. Mine, which are very important in this matchup. We're going to Lele for the Bridget, just get those out. Okay. I think we should look for Guzma just in case in the choice band start digging with trade. It's 30 damage on the Zorark doesn't doesn't really matter since um we're fighting weak anyways. And we do hit the grass energy to attach the Glissapod. I don't attach the nerf fighting fury belt. This is actually really good for us. That <laughs> he's using the GX attack early. And actually, smarter play would have been this card was pod last turn instead of the wind pod, so I could have benched it. But you know you live and you learn. So I think this turn this is the turn we really pull ahead in this game. So I think in order to just guarantee myself to not whiff. We're going to Lele and play the Mallow, because if we don't hit what we need to this turn, we pretty much fall behind because we're going to lose this Mewtwo since we have no way to get out of the active. So we want to place Mallow. On the top, we want to have DCE. No, we don't want We want Choice Band. See, there's only one in our deck, in our deck so we didn't want to risk not hitting it. Let's see, what else do we want? I'm going to go for the Acerola in case he starts to damage the Mewtwo. 
since this is really our win condition this game so we can just pick it up and then drop it back down trade away Glissopod. so we don't want to put too many items in our discard Let's see we're at one two three which isn't even enough to knock out the Mewtwo with the <laughs> Garboder and we do need to discard so we're at four so there are enough to just knock out Mewtwo with Garboder so we'll have to hope he doesn't hit some way to power that up. And we're going to draw two prizes. I think it's a smart choice in Ace Roll. We're going to puzzle a time to dig for a second one, but you never know these sort of things sometimes. Does hit the rainbow energy. Trash lance for the knockout. He goes down to three prizes. So we are going to end. Get rid of his large hand. And we do hit an ultra ball. As well as a field blower or this flow stone. We need our basic, but also we would have we have no hand after the ultra ball. So, oh crap, our third Lele is actually prized, so miscalculation on my part. So we'll grab the Tapu Koko and one more chance of grabbing all the prizes. Come on, Pokemon, don't punish my misplays. Bridget. That is alright, since we still have a card, now we have a card to trade away, unless he hits another float stone. Which he might, but forgive my misplay, no one plays perfectly, but still. Let's see, let's just play this puzzle time to arrange the top three. Hit the Guzma, Acerola. I think Acerola is a smart play right now, but we want in our hand first, since he right now he really has no way to... Although Guzma would have... He really has no way to... One shot since one shot energy only doing 100, so then we can pick it up and there. Oh, and he top stacks the second one. That's insane. So he's fighting fear belt on the buzz wall. That just fighting energy and passes. Yes, yeah, so right now, touching the strong energy, we're doing 30, 50, 60, 120. Doesn't look like he can one shot this aura. And we know the Guzma is on top of my deck to knock out that Garboder for the last prize. So it looks like we should win this game. But you know, a late game end to, could severely mess up our plans. And you never know what the opponent has. Crazy things can happen. See, he's played 2N. So. He's not guaranteed the end right now, like, especially with Billy Lock, he can't lay lay forward easily. But it looks like he just jet punches. He can't knock out the lay lay. We get the Guzma to knock out the Garboder. So with the Tapu Koko. This is why free retreat so important. And he concedes. Well, the, uh, as you can see, this deck is extremely strong. It says hard hitting attacks for single energy has healing options and, and and as well as ways to disrupt your opponent as well as tons of recovery for resources this it should from this game it should be clear why it's one of the best decks in the format right now and if you want to see an error decks put suggestions down in the comments and don't forget to subscribe bye